This episode is sponsored by Native. Native deodorant is aluminum and paraben free as well as vegan and cruelty free. Made with familiar and simple ingredients you know like coconut oil and shea butter. The plastic free deodorant is earth friendly and uses the same formula as the regular deodorant. It has 72 hour protection making it great for all day wear even after exercise. Use code BABISH5 to save 33% on your first Native plastic free deodorant pack and 20% off any body wash or lotion. These meatballs are good. Like Ikea good. Is there Parmesan in this? And lemon? And a little fennel? Are you sure you're not Italian, Liz? Maybe from the north? That's where the vampires used to live. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at the Rossitano meatballs from 30 Rock. Now, Frank Rossitano is Sicilian, so it makes sense that some interesting things are going to show up in his mama's meatballs, least of which is lemon. Great, Andy. Threw the lemon. You happy? So one of the first big questions I had about meatballs was, is it worth grinding your own meat? Obviously, it's going to give you better control over flavor, fat content, and quality, but I've never done it, and there are very few recipes that do. So I'm grinding up equal parts beef chuck and pork and veal shoulder. And then alternately, I'm using one pound of each meat's pre-ground grocery store equivalent. Same panade, same seasoning, same method for all intents and purposes. Now, before tasting anything, the first difference showed up post-fry. The store ground meat, which has been more thoroughly ground, better held its shape while the home ground stuff kind of cracked. At first that might seem like a bad thing, but they still held their shape, and I think cracked in the first place due to their higher moisture content and more tender texture. That being said, they were almost identical otherwise. As long as you start with high quality meat, you're going to end up with a high quality ball. And just as important as the meat is the panade traditionally a mixture of stale bread or breadcrumbs and milk. Now your meat might obviously be important, but the panade is what brings the moisture and flavor to the ball. So I'm going to try to absolutely max out this mixture on fat and flavor, starting with four pieces of white crustless sandwich bread, about 120 grams worth, to which I'm going to add one cup of buttermilk, plus a quarter cup shot of heavy cream to up the dairy fat content. Now give this a thorough mixing to make sure that all the bread is fully saturated. You want it to be practically a paste, otherwise you're going to have hunks of bread in your balls. So that's moisture. Now what about flavor. We're going to start with a little bit of onion. Just a little bit though. We don't want big chunks in there that are going to steam and turn our meatballs into meatloaf. Now in spite of what I just said, I've roughly chopped the onion and I'm going to saute it until it's lightly caramelized, about five minutes. At which point I'm going to kill the heat and add three cloves of roughly chopped garlic and about 50 grams or a third of a cup of pine nuts. Sicilian meatballs notably containing pine nuts and currants, which are now lightly toasted thanks to the residual heat of the pan. Now into a food processor goes 100 grams of diced pancetta, a half cup of packed fresh parsley, our cooled onion mixture, and about 30 grams or a quarter cup of currants. Normally in Sicilian meatballs, these and pine nuts would be left whole, but I don't think that sounds very good. I'm also adding a half teaspoon of anchovy paste, a heaping teaspoon of Calabrian chilies, both optional, and finally 50 grams of freshly grated Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, and I'm also going to add 50 grams of Pecorino Romano. Now this whole mixture I'm going to process into a sort of rough pesto. It's not completely smooth, there is a definite texture, but there's no big crunchy chunks of anything. So this should bring an absolutely ridiculous amount of flavor and fat to our our moisture making mixture. Adding that, plus two teaspoons of kosher salt, a few twists of freshly ground black pepper, a teaspoon of dried oregano, and a whole egg for structure. But again, the name of the game here is fat, so I'm also going to add a lone egg yolk, which will hopefully bring a little extra richness. Now along with parm, Liz detected fennel in the meatballs, along with her namesake, lemon, which as you can see I wasn't kidding, that was my last lemon, and now that I'm back from the grocery store I can add one teaspoon of freshly cracked fennel and the zest of one lemon. Now we're going to mix all this stuff into our panade until it's completely smooth, because once we add the meat, we don't want to overwork it. I'm adding one pound each, store ground beef, veal, and pork. And now comes the delicate balance of working the mixture just the right amount. You want the meats and the panade evenly distributed together so you don't have big channels of plain beef or flavor goo running through your meatballs, but not a modicum more than that, otherwise you're going to end up with tight, tough balls. Now before we form them into that self-same structure, we want to grab a little patty of our meatball farce, fry it up, and taste it for seasoning. And if my body language here is any indication, I'm very, very excited about these meatballs. And with that, it's time to finally form our farce into spheres, which we're going to do with wetted hands to prevent meaty finger syndrome. First, I'm going to form what I think is my ideal sized ball. I got this whole tray on a scale so I can measure each out to the same weight. These guys clock in at 125 grams each. You can go bigger or smaller as you desire. Now I'm going to roast them in a 425 degree Fahrenheit convection oven. I cranked on the broiler right at the end for a little extra color until the meatballs register 150 degrees Fahrenheit at their thickest point, which might sound a little low, but we're going to finish cooking them in the sauce. So I'm constructing a very basic tomato 
tomato sauce in my very biggest fry pan. If you want to see how to make a basic tomato sauce, click the link in the upper right hand corner right now. But I'm keeping it simple and short cooked because I like a bright contrast between my sauce and my balls. Yes, I am having a lot of fun saying that. I'm cooking it in such a wide pan, both so more water evaporates and the sauce concentrates more quickly, but also so that when it comes time to drop in our still very tender half cooked balls, we don't have to play meatball shuffle trying to get them all submerged in the sauce. Yeah, this guy can go right in the center. That's still symmetrical, right? I'm spooning sauce over top and simmering this guy for like 10 minutes max. We want the balls to gently come up to 165 Fahrenheit and no further. Serve it up with a little sauce, some freshly grated cheese, and scattered herbs. Now I want a good, clean cross section, so I'm going to use my very sharpest Babish knife, now available at Sam's Club, which is cool, so we can take a look at our meatball structure. It looks pretty smooth and consistent, not too tight, and these things are juicy in a way that I can only show you like this. We loaded them up with so many different fats and flavors, and while I only took loose inspiration from the show, I'm really glad I did, because these things are my meatball masterclass. Two times over, members of the Clean Plate Club, and... Should I do it? Yeah, okay. Licked Plate Club, that's a first. Gross. Thanks to Native for sponsoring today's episode. Take care of yourself with Native's 100% plastic-free deodorant. It's the same aluminum-free deodorant you love, now available in more sustainable packaging. Choose from a variety of scents, like my personal favorite, charcoal or citrus and herbal musk. Head to the link in my description and use code BABISH5 to get your first Native plastic-free deodorant pack for $26, normally $39, and get 20% off any body wash or lotion.